Hey everyone, so uh, EAP has launched in Singapore and it's quite a lot of people messaging me asking uh, what EAP will offer and what's the difference between EAP and FSD. So uh, I thought it would be good to quickly address these things, if not my messages will explode. Uh, I'm actually re-recording this because I did not click record in the first one, so uh, yeah. Ridiculous. Okay, anyway, so for EAP, there are some function features that you get with EAP. You get um, NAP, which is Navigate and Autopilot. Uh, you get Auto Lane Change, uh, you get Auto Park, you get Summon, and you get Smart Summon. Um, Auto Park works um, parallel parking. You need vehicles in front and behind of you, and then it, it can do the park. Uh, and then for perpendicular parking, you have the lane lines. You need the lane lines to be marked out clearly, right? So it has to be um, two straight lines. It has to be two straight lines marked out. Um, the whole lane lot has to be marked out. It cannot be the corner drawings, right? So the corner drawings, it won't work. Um, yeah, so that's for all the parts. So smart summon, is, smart summon and summon is quite... You don't get to use it too much in Singapore. Um, the difference is summon lets you move the vehicle front and back. And then uh, smart summon lets you get the vehicle to you. But uh, you're limited to six meters of range. So six meters is you might as well don't use it, right? It's just a gimmick, right? So for those who likes attention, please go ahead and use Smart Summon and take videos. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's move on to some of the things to take note of, right? Um, now that you have EAP. Uh, we'll start with some things that you shouldn't do, right? Um, so EAP really doesn't uh, change uh, much from autopilot. The only difference you get is the lane changes. So don't use it when uh, you are filtering out of lanes and you're going to have a very sharp bend after you exit. So over here, like you can see, I've just activated to show you, you have a sharp left and then the vehicle would plow straight ahead, right? Uh, that's because um, this is still autopilot. Right, it's still nothing changes. Right, it's it's still autopilot. So the vehicle doesn't know that the the lane the, the, the lane is going to have such a steep curve ahead. Uh, it's not FSD beta. Don't expect it to be FSD beta. Uh, we're nowhere near. And one more thing to take note of is right turns over here. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so uh, don't use it on right turns, mainly because, again, the vehicle follows lane lines, right? Lane markings. If there are no lane markings, the vehicle will not drive. Uh, so over here, you see the vehicle activated, and then I, I think I put it up uh, just to show you that the car would lose it halfway through. So don't activate it there. It's not meant to be used um, on this, uh, this kind of scenarios. So those are the main two things that uh, you need to be aware of for autopilot and even EAP or NOA. So even if you have FSD, this is going to be the same thing. It's not FSD beta. Uh, okay, so where can you use um, auto lane change? Auto lane change can be used on the larger stretches of straights, right? So you have some areas in Singapore where you uh, have long stretches of straights and those places you can use uh, auto lane change. So Braddle is one of them. Uh, Tampines Avenue 10, I think you can use it there also. Uh, you have one stretch along Avenue 3 and of course Bradder Road um, when you go up the flyover uh, you, can, you can use the auto lane change um, and of course uh, the highway you can use it right so over here you can see um, how it's going to go now we can use uh, auto lane change so I'm going to pull up the signal here and then you can do a lane change but once you enter the small, tra small streets um, here right uh, auto lane change is no longer available, right? So the difference, how you tell whether or not EAP is disabled, of course, one is if you flick on your signal, nothing happens, right? <laughs> it doesn't show you the visualization that you're going to change the lane. Uh, if not, then the next thing to take note of is when you're on EAP, it will show you most of the lanes that are available to drive, right? It marks them out. So if not, then it will mark out at least the lanes that are on your left and on your right. So over here, when you see, uh, you see most of the lanes available to you. Now, this means that EAP is enabled. So NAP, right? Um, the only difference with uh, navigate on autopilot is when the vehicle knows where to go, right? The vehicle knows when to exit the highway. So any NOA is, is enabled when you have one single blue line 
and that's NOA, right? Um, autopilot is the two lines. It means that it's only straddling the lanes, right? It doesn't know where it's going. It's just going to keep going and following those lanes all the way. Now, uh, we talk about merging onto the highway, right? So you can merge onto the, you can use um, AP and EAP to merge onto the highway. However, I do have a word of caution, mainly because it behaves in a very weird way, right? Uh, so down here we have a merging lane, and then we're on the right side, right? And the vehicle is going to pull up a left turn signal because it's trying to indicate to the to the use to the driver behind you that hey, you know, I'm going to go to the center of this lane, but no one does it in Singapore, and it's going to confuse the driver, right? He's going to think that you're going to want to change lane into the left lane. He's going to be wondering like, why are you doing that, right? <laughs> so so those are one of those things where it's kind of not ready yet. Then one more thing is as you ex as you merge onto the highway, you really do not have much clearance left, right? So if you know that you are not going to have much clearance, um. I really would not recommend using uh, EAP to do the lane change. Uh, just turn it off and get onto the highway first, then turn it back on, right? The reason for this is um, auto lane change needs space uh, to change, right? And the space it needs is very conservative, right? So it's going to require at least three vehicle space. And most of the time, if you're merging on a highway, doing peak hour traffic or even normal traffic, right? You're not going to get three, three vehicles length of space to do a lane change. So um, merge on the highway yourself and then enable. But when traffic is light, yeah, go ahead and, and let it do it. So to, how do you do a lane change, right? Um, put on your signals and then you have to slightly nudge the steering wheel. If the vehicle is comfortable in doing the lane change, it will follow through the movement. Please do not nudge the steering wheel anymore. Uh, it's really just tapping the steering wheel and letting it do the lane change. If you try to force the vehicle to do the lane change, which I was doing when I first started using it, you're just going to keep, you're going to get quite frustrated and you're going to wonder why is the vehicle not doing a lane change. So as always, the vehicle has a mind of its own and it's only going to do a lane change when it is when it feels comfortable, right? So, and that's the most conservative approach. Think, think of it as a P-plate driver. If you're sitting beside a friend who has just passed his license, he's going to take more time to do a lane change. He's going to need more space to do a lane change. And that is exactly what the vehicle is today, right? It's kind of like a P-plate driver. Uh, be patient with it. I do get frustrated, but if you really do get frustrated, just turn it off and drive, right? Um, <laughs> don't get angry over it so so yeah uh yeah so one more thing some people asked me before is when vehicles cut your lane does the vehicle react right uh yes of course the vehicle reacts uh in fact it it it's quite smooth nowadays um the one thing you need to take note of is vulnerable road users so if a motorbike comes in and if it stays in your lane, the vehicle is going to give more space to the motorbike. Um, whereas most of us actually don't do that in Singapore. So the driver behind you may be baffled why you're slowing down or why are you braking when there's still enough space. Um, so the vehicle tends to do that. And um, you can set the following distance on the scroll wheel uh, on your right hand side. That's turn it left or right. like, And you can set it from one to seven. For me, the sweet spot is between three to four. Uh, this gives the vehicle enough space. If someone cuts in, it's not going to slam on the brakes. Uh, that's for me. So we move on to the next one. So the next thing to take note of is when the when the vehicle goes into tunnels, uh, NOA will be disabled. So, uh, don't be alarmed, it's just normal. If there's no GPS settings, I mean, it's not too confident the vehicle will disable NOA. Uh, same for the weather, right? If, it's, if the weather is bad, NOA gets disabled. So as per expected, don't, um, don't be alarmed. And uh, just to take a point to note, right? Uh, when you're in a tunnel, pay more attention because the vehicle sometimes do end up thinking that it's on the surface. So it may adjust speed limits unnecessarily. So take more time to yeah, be aware of it. Then, okay, one more thing, right? So NOA um, over here. So the vehicle is trying to tell me to do a lane change, uh, mainly to exit, right? Because um, I'm exiting Havelock. So you see, it's really quite early, right? Um, two clicks is far for Singapore, right? It, down here is 1.6 right now. And normally the vehicle, sorry. Normally the vehicle would do it um, 2.1, 2.2 kilometers before. And that's quite far. 
right? For Singapore standards, that's really far, right? You don't want to be caught in this lane and then having to slow down while people exit and then you continue going straight. So you don't have to perform the lane change. You can just leave it there and let the car drive until you're comfortable for the lane change. For me, the sweet spot for um, FSD, sorry, for AP is uh, pretty much wait for it. Uh, yeah. Give it about one click to 1.2. Uh, that's a nice sweet spot to let the vehicle do the lane change. Um, so over here, AP tunnels, uh, NOA is disabled again. And just take note, right? Take, take your time to get confident with uh, autopilot. So I would say spend more time using it before trying to be too aggressive with it. So if you've driven here before, you know that the Havelock exit is actually quite sharp, right? Like it's quite a bend, but the vehicle actually knows, right? The autopilot can handle it compared to other level two ADA systems. Like no other vehicle is able to slow down in time and keep within the lane. Huh? So this is something where it takes time to be confident and let the vehicle do this. Uh, but as always, right? Uh, just always pay attention um, to your surroundings. If there's a vehicle behind you that's really tailing you super close, um, don't, don't, don't use AP because AP may, may, may decide to do something that you do not know uh, that it's going to do. So over here, you heard a beep, right? Um, those beeps are fine. Uh, what those beeps are telling you... Is that, is that a beep? Yeah, that's a beep. Sorry. So those beeps are telling you that the vehicle is actually not um, confident of the road ahead. Just pay more attention. Uh, don't get alarmed by it. Uh, just let it be. So over here, we're talking about the settings, right? Um, autopilot settings. So what settings should you use? What settings should you not use? Or you should customize these settings. Um, so before you start using, uh, try to customize the settings and play around with it and find something that you like to use um, over time. Uh, yeah, so click on autopilot. Um, and then you would have uh, navigate on autopilot. Uh, select yes or for every trip. Uh, this means that once you're on a highway and if there's navigation info, uh, NOA comes on. Um, and then for speed-based lane changes, I've set it to disable for me because I, the vehicle is not aggressive enough to constantly overtake and go back to lane, go overtake and come back to the lane. Uh, Singapore drivers also don't give way. So uh, it's not the best um, environment for AP at this point of time. So I've disabled it. Um, just do a lane change when you want to do a lane change, when you want to overtake. Uh, that's the best option for me so far. Or the next best is Mao. Uh, you can try putting, on, putting it on Mad Max, uh, but sooner or later you'll get irritated by the amount of times a vehicle is trying to ping you to do a lane change and then it can't do the lane change. So that's for AP settings. And the next few things is, yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, smart summon and bumper clearance, I've reduced everything to the lowest possible setting. And even then, it's still very conservative for city traffic. Uh, I think they should have something which is like 5 cm, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is just for someone. If you give it too much clearance, the vehicle is not going to move at all. Uh, in fact, when you're in a multi story car park, you're literally like less than 10 cm away from the pillar. Or the <laughs> so, 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 um, many a times actually it doesn't work. So, yeah, something to just take note of. Is that all I have for this? Uh, standby mode uh, for Smart Summon, I've mainly turned it off. It's just going to waste battery because you're not going to be able to use uh, Smart Summon that much. Mm, okay. Anything here that I want to cover? Again, right turns. Um, so over here, right, the vehicle actually managed to follow the, through the lane, but um, as always, please just don't do it. Like, you see, uh, we have to disengage at the end of it. So, while well, it's fun, to see it do it, uh, autopilot is never meant to do a right turn uh, lane change. Okay. Do we have anything more? Yeah, okay, we're good. So, so yeah, I think that pretty much sums up. Um, yeah, that pretty much sums up most of the features that are available for NOA. So yeah, I think it's super worth it. You should get it if you want it. Um, it really changes the driving experience. Uh, and I think 5K to, to purchase EAP is, is like cheap, right? Um, it's uh, 
cheap in a sense where like if FSD back then was 11.5 so just to get these features like we paid 11.5 for it so now if it's 5.7 you get most of the features that are enabled for Singapore then uh, it's more than good to go I think you enjoy it you'll love it so my advice is uh, my recommendation is um, if you use AP you enjoy it go ahead get it uh, it's great right it's great you will like it so um, I hope this helps if there's more questions just post them in the comments below I hope I've addressed most of it I've got a call to take so uh, see you guys in the next one if you uh, like the content please just like and subscribe see you in the next one